This is NEC News Today. I'm Jeremiah McKinnon with NECnewstoday.com. Here now are the top cannabis news stories from around New England for the second week of May 2022. Our first story this week comes from Massachusetts. Treasurer Deb Goldberg has appointed an interim chair to temporarily replace Steve Hoffman on the Cannabis Control Commission. On May 9th, Massachusetts Treasurer Deborah Goldberg appointed her general counsel to serve as interim chair of the Cannabis Control Commission. Sarah G. Kim has worked for the Treasurer since 2015 and will now fill the seat recently vacated by former Chairman Steve Hoffman. Treasurer Goldberg said in the announcement that Sarah has extensive leadership experience and knowledge about the standards, goals, and operations of the Commission, as well as perspective on the necessary steps that must be taken to implement good policies in Massachusetts. Sarah also served as Deputy Treasurer, which gave her general oversight of the Alcohol Beverages Control Commission. Before joining Treasurer Deborah Goldberg's team, Ms. Kim worked as an Assistant Attorney General under Martha Coakley. Chair Kim held her first Cannabis Control Commission meeting on May 12th and expressed her appreciation for the warm welcome from her fellow commissioners. Treasurer Goldberg has appointed Chair Kim while she undergoes the process to find a permanent chairperson for the commission. The arrival of Chair Kim marks the first time in commission history without an inaugural member participating. For more information on this developing story, please visit necnewstoday.com. In Vermont news this week, lawmakers in the Senate reluctantly decided to keep THC limits in place after the House reintroduced the caps in a last-minute edit. After a lot of back and forth between officials, activists, and physicians, senators at the Vermont State House reluctantly ended up keeping the controversial THC limits on certain cannabis products in place. Vermont enacted a 60% THC limit on cannabis concentrates, edibles, and hashish products in 2020. Cannabis activists who opposed the THC caps found allies in the Vermont Senate who felt that this restriction would undercut the future cannabis marketplace in the state. Even Chairman James Pepper of the Cannabis Control Board recently told lawmakers that the THC limits would be, quote, a gift to the illicit market, and that regulators are in agreement that the limits should be eliminated. Lawmakers have been working on what they call necessary adjustments to the Vermont Cannabis Law. House lawmakers reintroduced the THC caps, which frustrated senators, who did not appreciate the last-minute addition. Without much time to call for a conference committee to reconcile the differences between the House and Senate, the bill was approved by a voice vote and now heads to Governor Phil Scott to be signed into law. This story is developing. For more information, please visit our website. This week, after hearing great things about edibles from Coast Cannabis, a woman-owned cannabis manufacturer in Massachusetts, we decided to try their milk chocolate s'mores bar. The 100 milligram chocolate bar we tried was delicious and potent. The tasty treat was a milk chocolate bar containing marshmallow and graham cracker bits. This is just one of many edible products made by Coast Cannabis. For the full review, including photos, please visit our website, necnewstoday.com. Connecticut has released data that shows that over 15,000 applications have been submitted in the two lotteries for an adult use dispensary license. Six licenses will be awarded to social equity applicants, and another six will be awarded to general applicants. According to the State Department of Consumer Protection, there were 8,357 applications submitted by social equity applicants before the deadline. General applicants submitted 7,245 applications to the lottery in hopes of receiving a dispensary license. That brings the total number of applications submitted in both lotteries to 15,602. The number may appear high due to the fact that the lottery system does not prevent entities from submitting multiple applications. However, the state will not issue more than two licenses to any company. The state plans to conduct the first lottery for the social equity applicants before the end of the month. Industry analysts predict that the first adult use dispensary could open in Connecticut by the end of 2022. For more information on this developing story, please visit our website. A federal judge recently denied a man in Maine the ability to use medical cannabis while on bail. Federal Judge John Nivison recently ordered that Lucas Ciros not use any marijuana while on bail, even with a prescription. Ciros allegedly ran a large marijuana selling operation where he and his co-conspirators made more than $13 million in six years, according to court documents. Ciros' attorney petitioned the court to allow for the use of medically prescribed marijuana, which would comply with Maine law. In his ruling, Judge Nivison clarified that while Maine law allows for lawful medical marijuana possession, State law does not supersede the blanket federal prohibition on marijuana. Judge Nivison ordered that even prescription marijuana use by Ciros would be in violation of federal law and the court's order. For more information about the story, please visit our website. Alternative Compassion Services has announced a partnership that will bring infused dehydrated fruit to Massachusetts. Alternative Compassion Services with medical dispensaries in Bridgewater and Hull 
has announced the debut of a new edible product. The company now has a partnership with Forbidden Fruit Company that is bringing infused dehydrated fruit to Massachusetts' cannabis market. According to the announcement, the product is designed to be an alternative to the traditional cannabis edible. These edibles are made from real fruit sourced from its indigenous origin. The first flavors to become available are mango and pineapple. The product will make its debut at ACS and Hall and Bridgewater starting on May 13th. For more information on this new cannabis product, please visit NECnewsToday.com. Residents in Foxborough, Massachusetts had the chance to reverse their town's ban on cannabis establishments, but chose to keep it in place instead. Foxborough voters made their feelings known on whether to allow cannabis establishments within their community. The proposal would have allowed cannabis establishments to seek approval to open along the Route 1 corridor and on some of the land between the East Belcher Road and the Forbes Crossing Plaza. Select woman Leah Gibson pointed to the fact that marijuana industry is a revenue driver and no longer new and unfamiliar. Some residents felt that having a cannabis dispensary in town would increase the rate of youth drug use. Other residents felt that it would have negative impacts on the town and community, and that the revenues would not justify the trouble that hosting such an establishment would cause. The proposal needed a two-thirds majority in order to pass, but only 53 voted in support, 83 voted in opposition. For more information on this story, please visit our website. The New England Council has taken a position on cannabis banking at the federal level and has now made their support public. Since 1925, the New England Council has represented public and private organizations in the New England region. Over the years, the cannabis industry has become part of the New England landscape. Recently, members of the New England Council made it clear that they support changes to federal law that would allow marijuana businesses to utilize banking services. The federal illegality of marijuana means that most banks will not serve cannabis businesses, which causes most customers to pay in cash. The Council has determined to support legislation such as the Secure and Fair Enforcement Banking Act, also known as the SAFE Banking Act. If passed, the SAFE Banking Act would open the door to legally allow financial institutions to work with cannabis businesses. To find out more about this story, please visit our website. A cannabis delivery company named Doobie is now making deliveries on the South Shore. Erica Kennedy is from Wareham, one of the 29 communities designated by the state as disproportionately impacted by high rates of arrest and incarceration for marijuana and other drug crimes as a result of state and federal drug policy. Erica is co-founder of Doobie, which has received approval from the Cannabis Control Commission to commence operations in May 2022 after working with her husband on the project for years. Doobie is now licensed as a marijuana delivery operator that received priority review from being certified as an economic empowerment applicant in 2018. Doobie deliveries normally come in a signature blue and yellow happy box, but customers can opt for a less noticeable package if they wish. While Doobie is the first cannabis delivery company to become operational in Wareham, Doobie is the eighth cannabis-related business to open in the town. The Doobie warehouse is a short distance from the Trade Roots facility, which also recently opened. For more information about this delivery service, please visit NECnewsToday.com. Officials in Winthrop, Maine have chosen not to punish the medical marijuana dispensary that opened their doors before getting council approval. Officials in Winthrop, Maine have chosen not to punish a local medical marijuana dispensary after they opened their business before receiving town council approval. Earthkeeper Cannabis opened their 357 Main Street dispensary shortly after receiving approval from the planning board. According to the Winthrop Code Enforcement Officer Mark Arsenal, the confusion stemmed from the new town ordinance that recently went into effect. Language in that ordinance requires cannabis businesses to also obtain approval from the town council prior to opening. Arsenal described the mistake as a learning moment for the town. Earthkeeper Cannabis is the town's first applicant to open cannabis business since the ordinance took effect. Arsenal says that he takes responsibility for the miscommunication and hopes that everyone has learned from what happened. In May, Earthkeeper Cannabis did receive the final approval it needed from the town council. To learn more about the story, please visit our website. Three new strains are available at Sierra Naturals in Massachusetts as part of the newly launched Kind brand. The new brand of cannabis flower called Kind recently debuted at Sierra Naturals in Somerville and Needham. According to the announcement, Kind is finally cultivated cannabis flower for all humankind. The brand promises premium flower with high THC percentage grown pesticide and disease-free through quality obsession and meticulous cultivation standards. Kind is making its debut with three strains including Orangutan Skittles, Mr. Nasty, and Fresh Squeezed. For more information about these new strains, please visit NECnewsToday.com. Last but not least this week, a company with CBD stores in Connecticut is recovering after a break-in at one store and a shooting at another. Greenleaf Farms operates several CBD stores in Connecticut. 
According to Norwich police, two individuals recently broke in through the front window at the Norwich store and stole merchandise. The company also had shots fired at their Bridgeport store in recent weeks. The owner believes that his stores are being targeted because of the misconception that he sells marijuana. Bags of raw hemp flour were likely stolen because of their resemblance to bags of marijuana. The hemp products contain less than 0.3% of THC, which makes it unappealing to those who'd like to get high. Marijuana is legal for adult use in Connecticut, but dispensaries have not yet opened. The owner of the stores hopes to prevent future incidents by making it clear to the public that they're not a marijuana dispensary and that the products offered are different. Police are still searching for the suspects involved in this break-in. For more information about this story, please visit our website. For the absolute latest New England cannabis news, head on over to necnewstoday.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video. Subscribe to NEC News Today for more great content and hit the bell icon so you never miss an episode of the show. For New England Cannabis News Today, this is Jeremiah McKinnon reminding you to always use cannabis responsibly and to enjoy your cannabis-filled adventures throughout New England.